Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Shrinagasveshwara Residential Public School YouTube online classes for 10 standard students. Previous class, uh, we discussed about uh, Indian industries. Just we can go for the glance, uh, like whatever we discussed in the previous class. Like introduction part, we discussed regarding introduction, like uh, meaning of industries, then localization of industries and main important industrial regions are zones in India and iron and steel industries. So this class we are going to discuss about producing centers of iron and steel industries. So before that, I explained about like industries. It means like converting of raw materials into finished goods. It is economical activity. It is called as industries. And I explained about localization of industries. If we want to set up any kind of industries, what are the main requirements? That is called localization of industries. So I explained a very important points. That's supply of raw materials and transport and communication facilities and efficient labor and water facilities and government policies. So these are the important points, whatever so those are very important for localization of industries. So next I explain regarding industrial regions or industrial zones. Some industrial regions like I told, Ugli, Kolkata region is the first industrial region. And second, Mumbai, Pune region. And then it is like Madurai, Goyambatur region and Bangalore region. So we can see that like Vishakhapatnam, Guntur region. So these are the important like industrial regions are zones in India. So next I explained regarding iron and steel industries. So iron and steel industries which is a very important metal based industry. So it is the industry, it is based of all industries. Why? Because some industries are depend upon these industries which are those automobile industries, locomotive industries, agricultural industries, you know, shipbuilding industries. So these are the very important industries depend upon iron and steel industries. That's what is called basic industries. So the first iron and steel industries, it was started in, you know, like, at, like Kulti in West Bengal. So next I explained re, uh, regarding like localization of iron and steel industries. If we want to set up a iron and steel industries, which are the important requirements, localization of iron and steel industries. I said very important raw material. What is that raw material of iron and steel industries? Iron ore. Iron ore, it is a very important like raw material of iron and steel industries. And second, coking coal. The coking coal is very important to set up iron and steel industries. And next, capital investment. And then like transport and communication. And the next government policies, the government support. So these are the important like uh, requirements to start like iron and steel industries. This class I am going to explain about producing centers. Producing centers of iron and steel. See, in India, there are 14 integrated iron and steel industries are there. There are 14 integrated iron and steel plants. So out of four, four are private and remaining 10 are public, public sector industries. The four are private means these four industries are run by the private company, the individual. And the ten are public. Uh, public means uh, which industries are run by the government. It is separate rules and regulations for that. So now I am going to tell first one it is private sector industries. Private. Yes, private sector, like uh, important private sector iron and steel industries. 
first one it is the tata and iron and steel company at sakti jamshedpur in jharkhand the first private sector iron and industry is the tata iron and steel company at sakti in you know it is near to jamshedpur in jharkhand state it is popularly known as tisco t i s c o it is a private iron and steel tisco means the tata iron and steel company it is at sakchi sakchi jamshedpur in jharkhand state yes it is in jharkhand it's the first private uh, like iron and steel industry and second one it is jindal vijayanagara steel limited has toranagallu in it is in ballari district karnataka it is popularly known as jvsl jvsl so this the tata iron steel limit company is popularly known as tisco and next it is jvsl means jindal vijayanagara vijayanagar steel limited it is at toranagallu toranagallu ballari district in karnataka yes and uh, third one it is ispa iron and steel limited it is at dolvi ratnagiri district in maharashtra ispa iron and steel company so this is ispa iron and steel limited company at dolvi dolvi at dolvi ratnagiri district ratnagiri district in maharashtra in maharashtra so last one it is dubari steel plant at gopalpur in odisha dubari steel plant at dolvi gopalpur in odisha yes so these are the important four private sector iron and steel industries in india so just remember once again there are four there are totally 14 integrated iron and steel industries are there out of 14 four are private one is tisco the tata iron and steel company at sakchi jamshedpur in jharkhand and jvsl jindal vijayanagara steel limited at toranagallu bellary district in karnataka and this path iron and steel company at dolvi ratnagiri district in maharashtra the last one is dubari steel plant at gopalpur in odisha state so these are the four like a private next i am going to explain about public sector industries there are 10 public sector iron and steel industries are there let me explain about that public sector iron and steel industries yes now public sector
iron and steel industries yes come to the point one first one the first public iron uh, like uh, public iron and steel industries first one it is indian iron and steel company it is at bharanpur in west bengal it is popularly known as isco i i s c o it means indian iron and steel company it is at it is at bharanpur in west bengal and second one it is it is in our state only that is vishweshwaraya iron and steel limited at bhadravati in karnataka it is popularly known as v i s l write down the first one is isco i i s c o it means indian indian iron and steel company at bharanpur bharanpur in west bengal and the next it is second one vishweshwaraya vishweshwaraya iron and steel limited at bhadravati in karnataka yes and the next some important another iron and steel industries are there which are established in the time of the five year plans so that's important bilai rukela durgapur and bokaro so the first one it is hindustan steel limited at darg district in chatisgarh and second one it is hindustan steel limited at rukela sundargarh at sundargarh in odisha state so next it is hindustan steel limited durgapur in west bengal and the next it is bokaro steel plant at bokaro in jharkhand so at the time so these iron steel plants are established with the help of russia with the help of russia we established these for like no iron steel plants the first one is hindustan iron and steel limited so is at bakaro it is at bokaro it is in chatisgarh at bokaro in chatisgarh and the next one it is hindustan iron and steel limited <coughs> so the second one it is it is hindustan iron and steel limited rurkela sundargarh district in odisha state uh, sundargarh at sundargarh in odisha state and the next it is hindustan iron steel limited at durgapur in west bengal hindustan iron and steel limited at durgapur in west bengal yes like look here so the public sector 
like iron steel industries are the first one is co indian iron steel company and banpur in west bengal second one is vishweshwaraya iron and steel limited at bhadravati in like karnataka it is popularly known as b i s l and third one hindustan iron and steel limited at bokaro in chatisgarh and next one it is hindustan iron and steel limited at sundargarh district in odisha and fifth one it is hindustan iron and steel limited at durgapur in west bengal so remaining five i will explain next one is bokaro steel plant at bokaro in jharkhand and the salem steel plant at salem in tamil nadu and the eighth one is it is the visakhapatnam iron and steel industry at visakhapatnam in andhra pradesh and ninth one it is daitri steel plant it is at daitri near paradi in odisha and last one it is tata steel plant at kalinganagara in odisha so you mean like the five iron steel industries i hope you understand the five so next remaining five i will explain yes so next it is sixth one see that is bokaro steel plant bokaro steel plant at bokaro at odisha so and the next it is jharkhand and the next it is the salem as steel plant at salem in tamil nadu salem steel plant at salem in tamil nadu and the eighth one it is visakhapatnam visakhapatnam iron and steel company at visakhapatnam in andhra pradesh and the ninth one it is like daitri steel plant at daitri near paradip in odisha daitri daitri steel plant at daitri near paradip paradip in odisha and the last one it is the 10th one it is tata steel plant at kalinganagara in odisha the tata steel plant at kalinganagar kalinganagar in odisha yes so these are the like uh, remaining five of public sector industries as i said the bokaro steel plant at bokaro in jharkhand the salem steel plant at salem in tamil nadu the visakhapatnam iron steel industries at visakhapatnam in andhra pradesh and daitri steel plant at daitri near paradi like in odisha the last one is tata steel plant at kalinganagara in odisha so these are the important like public sector iron and steel industries in india apart from this other another 99 mini steel plants are there in india apart from there four or like uh, private sector and like 10 are like public sector total 14 apart from 14 there are another 99 other uh, separate steel plants are there in india india it is the eighth largest producing of iron and steel industry what about first the china it is the first like a uh, uh, like country 
So producing like first place it is producing our industries. India is the eighth largest like uh, country. So where we are producing iron and steel industries. So now like I completely explained about iron and steel industries. Like uh, now like location of iron and steel industries and the first iron and steel industries in India. Then localization of iron and steel industries and the next a uh, very important producing centers of iron and steel industries in India. So next I am going to explain about aluminium industries. Yes, come to the point now. Aluminium industries. Second one. First one, iron steel industries over. Next, second one, it is aluminium. Yes. Aluminium industries. Aluminium industries, it is second important metal based industry. It is in second important metal based industry. It is, this is metal based industry. First, it, as I said, iron steel industry. Second, aluminium. See, it is very important second like type of metal based industries. It is also called as non ferrous metal. Which one? Aluminium. Non ferrous. Yes. Understand this. See why the aluminium it is called as non ferrous. No, ferrous means which minerals are containing iron. Which minerals, which metals are containing iron content it is there that is called ferrous. But this is non ferrous metal means iron content is absent. Iron content is not there. It is very less, very less iron content is not there. So that is why aluminium it is called as non ferrous metal. And also it is wide range of uses are there many purpose. For different, di different purpose we are using this aluminium. That is why it is called as wonder metal of 20th century. We can say that means different purpose we are using this. Which one? Aluminium. So what are the uses of aluminium industries means? What are the uses of aluminium means? It is very useful in like manufacturing of aeroplanes, automobiles, ships, railways, household appliances, electrical cables and paint industries. You know, so painting material, you know, so these are the important like uses of aluminium. So, and also it is a good substitute for copper and you know like steel. It is a good substitute means where we are using the you know like uh, iron and just, uh, copper we are using this the aluminium. It is a good substitute of you know like uh, of copper and you know steel. So, I am going to tell like some important uses of aluminium. What purpose we can use? First one manufacturing. Manufacturing aeroplanes. Manufacturing of aeroplanes and automobiles. Electrical cables. Electrical cable. Household appliances. Household appliances appliances and the next fifth one it is paint industry yes so this is users users of aluminium industries Yes, 
the use of aluminium industries are as i said the manufacturing of aeroplanes and automobiles you know like electrical cables household appliances and paint industries so these are the uses of aluminium industries that's why it is called as a wonder metal even it is also using for packing purpose packing materials yes it is using for packing like purpose also so these are the uses of aluminium industries so this aluminium industries are uh, like uses are very uh, like much more wider range the uses are more next i am going to tell you localization of aluminium industries if you want to establish this aluminium industries means what are the requirements are there so that's very important localization of aluminium industries the first what is very essential means the first it is very important availability of bauxite why because bauxite bauxite it is the ore of aluminium industries the availability of bauxite is very important the localization of localization of aluminium industries yes localization of aluminium industries are the first one it is availability of bauxite availability of bauxite availability of bauxite and others are uh, very important means it is the main raw material so where like we are using uh, in the aluminium industries and the next it is like supply of hydroelectricity supply of hydro electricity and the third one it is market and government policy government policy means the support of government it's very essential and wide the market facility need and fifth one it is capital so these are the important like requirements where we can if you want to establish this aluminium industries these requirements are very important localization of aluminium industries that is availability of bauxite supply of hydroelectricity hydroelectricity means which electricity producing through the force of the water we can see that you know where we can see that uh, shivana samudra so if you go there means we can see that how they produce the electricity through the force of the water hydroelectricity and market so it's wide market we need and government policies we need and capital so these are the important localization of industries in india the first aluminium industries was started in the year 1942 it was at jayakanagar in west bengal the first aluminium industry industry where it is at jayakanagar jaya kai nagar it is in west bengal in the year 1942 the first aluminium industry which was established at jayakanagar in west bengal and other important aluminium uh, industries are there like you know alampuram in kerala metur in tamil nadu belagavi in karnataka as paraba in chatisgarh like uh, you know next come to the point here ratna ratnagiri in maharashtra so renukot it is in uttar pradesh so these are the important other important uh, like aluminum and aluminum industries and india it is the 11th largest country so where we are producing the aluminum in the world in 11th place so next we are going to understand 
that discuss about cotton textile industries previous whatever i explained that is metal based industries iron and steel industries are metal based industries now i'm going to explain about cotton textile industries cotton textile industries yes see this cotton textile industries it is the biggest and the most important branch of textile industry very important it is very biggest and most important branch of textile industries means cotton textile industries and also it is called as agro based industries agro based industry which one cotton textile industries so here the first cotton textile mills was set up in the year 1854 only 1854 only the first cotton mills are set up where it was in mumbai where mumbai yes the first cotton textiles mills was set up at mumbai in the year 1854 so india it is the second rank of production of cotton in the world what about first china it is the first like rank in the production of cotton textile and india it is the second place india it is the second largest country where we are producing like cotton in, in the world and next we see the lo localization of like cotton textile industries if you want to locate if you want to set up a cotton textile industries what are the important uh, like requirements localization important means first one is we need raw cotton raw cotton means which is very important raw material for cotton textile industries and second one vast market market and power electricity capital and skilled labor see if you want to set up cotton textile industries this is very important which are those raw cotton we need if you want to set up cotton textile industries raw cotton we need vast market we need and other important capital we need and skilled laborers so those like labor should be very skillful and you know humid climate very important reason here humid climate is very important for the like if you want to set up cotton textile industries for example very high temperature high means temperature is very high dry is there means the cotton it may break the thread is there na cotton thread may break that's why the humid climate is very important and now come to the point distribution of cotton textile industries in india the distribution there are 76 towns the cotton textile industries are there in, in india 76 towns and cities like which are located in different states in india like very leading states of uh, production of uh, like uh, cotton textile means only two one is maharashtra and gujarat maharashtra and gujarat yes these two states are leading uh, producer of uh, cotton in, in in india other states like like you know tamil nadu karnataka madhya pradesh rajasthan uttar pradesh punjab and haryana so these are the other states, but leading states means <coughs> maharashtra and gujarat so here these are leading uh, like uh, states so where they are producing uh, like cotton in in india and so the mumbai it is there you know mumbai mumbai it is famous for cotton textile industries that's why mumbai it is also called as cottonopolis understand cottonopolis or manchester yes manchester of india listen here very important the mumbai it is called as cottonopolis or manchester of india why manchester means 
it is like very important cotton textile industries are located in manchester where it is situated in uk united kingdom when industrialization was happened in the europe when industrialization happened in england uk that more cotton textile industries are situated in manchester only actually the city manchester is situated in uk united kingdom and in india more cotton textile industries are there in mumbai that's why the mumbai it is called as manchester of india or cottonopolis now you, i hope you understand why mumbai it is called as manchester of india or cottonopolis why more cotton mills are situated in mumbai and the next i'm going to tell that another important industry that is sugar industry after cotton sugar industry next it is sugar industry sugar industry yes come to the point here after cotton textile industry another agro based industries means sugar industries sugar industry is also called as agro based industries why the raw material it is getting by through the agriculture only that's why so the main raw material sugar cane the so it is depend upon sugar cane only that's why it is called as agro based industries come to the point here second important agro based industries means sugar industries see this the heart of sugar making it is it was ancient time only we like you know in the time of 20th century only we know that so like our like sugar mills are started in 20th century only so but it was gar and kandasari see gar and kandasari see what is this gar and kandasari means this is the production of sugar it was traditional means where they made homemade like in a cottage in cottage industries was there on that time we know already ancient time only we know about that production of sugar means it was gar and kandasari means traditional uh, like you know the way of producing as a like sugar in india so next come to the point here if you want to set up that if you want to set up that uh, sugar industries means what are the important requirements means localization of sugar industries first one it is sugar cane is very important sugar cane see that's why sugar industries are situated where more like sugar growing places are there sugar growing states are there so that's why you no know, sugar cane it is very important raw material and another one you know like efficient laborers and market so on the capital so government policies these are the requirements of the production of you know like localization of uh, sugar industries first one it is raw material is very important which is the raw material for like sugar industries sugar cane and the second one uh, like a supply of electricity and the next one it is transport and next efficient labor and the water supply is very important for sugar industries so this you know very important for like a localization of sugar industries see the distribution where it is uh, like uh, uh, in which states are more uh, like uh, sugar industries are there means as you know like very important maharashtra more sugar industries are there uttar pradesh you know like andhra pradesh gujarat punjab haryana bihar odisha in the different states more you know like sugar industries are there next i am going to tell another type of industry that is paper industries paper industries yes see this paper i said beginning iron and steel industries and aluminium metal based industries next I explain regarding cotton textile and sugar industries that is uh, like agro based industries come to the point paper industry it is forest based industry this paper industries the paper is 
indispensable and very useful product what is indispensable means it is most important without paper we can't so paper is very important that is indispensable and very useful what purpose we are using paper means as you know so we are using paper for writing purpose and wrapping purpose nothing but that we, we are packing something materials to the paper you know the wrapping purpose and packing and the printing so purpose we are using this paper in exam the last question what are the use of paper so paper using for like you know writing purpose wrapping packing and the printing purpose see in one country if you want to see the level of education means it is basis on consumption of paper only but now we can't say you know it is completely digitalized you can this word you can say like a previous time you know but so according to this the like one country is for example the country education and literacy rate level we measure through the consumption of paper only so here the first modern paper mill was set up at in the at sirampur uh, it is in west bengal in the year 1932 so in the year 1932 first paper mill was started in india where it where it was it is in sirampur sirampur in west bengal yes now come to the point if you want to set up that like paper industries means what are the raw materials are very important some raw materials like very important some you know like a uh, bamboo some like you no know, like it is very raw material very important raw material of our paper industries are the first one it is you no know, like bamboo it is very important raw material for paper industries and cellulose um uh, pulp grass yes you know like these are the important the bamboo uh, cellulose uh, pulp the grass like you know like you know uh, like uh, grass like you know sabai and babar see these are the raw materials are very important which are those bamboo bamboo and cellulose apal the grass and sabai and like you know grass like you know bahar so these are the important raw material essential for set up paper mills see apart from this when like you know because lack of forest based raw material because of lack of uh, raw materials uh, that's why another we are other another type of raw materials we are using which are those some straw paddy straw paddy and wheat and bagas cotton lins so these are we are using apart from these besides we need a plenty of water we need to produce not like paper another very important the mass market supply of you know like uh, transport and communication and like you know like labor so skilled labor so these are the important like a uh, raw material for a uh, paper industry is the last and final i am going to explain about a very important that is knowledge based industries that is knowledge based industries knowledge based industries see these industries are different from previous industries whatever explained iron and steel industries and you know aluminum industries cotton textile industries sugar industries the paper industries this is different why you know the knowledge based industries are depend upon like intensive of input of technology and knowledge so we are going to input here technology and as well as knowledge so this completely depend upon human resource human knowledge human knowledge is very important for knowledge based industries in this knowledge based industries instead of a physical and raw material here we are not using any physical uh, things we are not using any kind of raw material here instead of that what we are using is we are using human knowledge the human knowledge is very important 
in india so like the society and the economy it is depend upon like knowledge based industries only so here like very important knowledge based industries it is also called as like it and bt it and bt see it means information technology and bt means biotechnology here information technology so in india to like uh, support this a kind of industries the central government and state government is they started stp see what is that stp means software technology technology parks yes the central government and the state government they established the stps software technology like a uh, parks so very important means instead of raw material and physical things here we need intellectual capabilities we need intellectual capabilities rather than physical and under raw materials so here these industries are set up in the different states so like now these industries especially these industries are concentrated in south india only south india states the central government and the state government they started this stp in the year 1995 remember so this stp stp was started in the year 1995 for what reason means to support this knowledge based industries they concentrated mainly so some south indian states like karnataka telangana maharashtra like uh, tamil nadu kerala so in these states like uh, knowledge based industries are concentrated and especially in karnataka where it is situated means so the more knowledge based industries are situated in bangalore bangalore and other cities like you know mangalore then hubli you know mysore in these different places uh, like knowledge based industries are situated like more number of knowledge based industries are situated in bangalore only that's why the bangalore it is called as silicon valley of india silicon valley so where more number of like uh, information technology means so, so uh, knowledge based industries are situated in bangalore that's why the bangalore it is called as silicon valley means so india is one of the leading country so where we are uh, like exporting software to the other countries so this is what to be discussed in this knowledge based industries so complete in this lesson we discussed about the introduction part like meaning of industries then localization of industries like uh, regions in the industrial regions in, in india like iron steel industries and then sugar industries cotton textile industries paper and the last one is knowledge based industries so i hope you understand all this content next class we are going to start a new lesson Thank you.